Everyone knows that life is impossible without oxygen. In order to transport oxygen, the human body needs red blood cells. Their production in the bone marrow is stimulated by a hormone called erythropoietin, or EPO for short. And this hormone is produced in our kidneys when red blood cell counts or oxygen levels are low. 30 years ago, the mechanism which stimulates the kidneys to produce EPO in response to decreased oxygen levels was still unknown. It was only uncovered by the investigation of Professor Sir Peter Ratcliffe, Professor Dr. Samanza and Professor Dr. Kailin. A groundbreaking discovery that earned them the Nobel Prize and opened a whole new field of therapeutic possibilities. They identified the hypoxia-inducible factor, also called HIF, an essential factor for the transcription of several genes, including EPO. So what exactly is HIF and how does it work? Let's see. Under normoxic conditions, the enzyme HIF, prolyl hydroxylase, hydroxylates HIF-alpha. This allows binding with the von Hippel-Lindau protein, which then targets the complex for degradation in the proteasome. Under hypoxic conditions, no oxygen is available to allow HIF prolyl hydroxylase to hydroxylate HIF-alpha. The protein remains functional, allowing it to bind the hypoxia response element together with other transcriptional factors, inducing gene transcription, for example, of EPO. This discovery practically constitutes a revolution for anemia management. Patients with chronic kidney disease often suffer from anemia, as damaged kidneys may have a decreased amount of EPO-producing cells. Currently, the principal standard of care to counteract low EPO levels consists of administration of iron, transfusions of red blood cells, or the administration of erythropoiesis-stimulating agents called ESAs, which are biologically and structurally similar to EPO. However, as ESA dosage increases, in order to counter anemia, ESA resistance and cardiovascular complications can become a problem. But that could become a thing of the past, as EPO production can now also be increased by targeting HIF with the help of HIF prolyl hydroxylase inhibitors. In direct comparison with ESAs, HIF prolyl hydroxylase inhibitors offer many advantages. They are administered orally and not intravenously. They do not require cold storage, and the small molecule agents are cheaper to produce. As of September 2021, some HIF prolyl hydroxylase inhibitors are already licensed for treating renal anemia in Asia and Europe. However, analyses of global phase 3 data recently also showed some safety signals, including an enhanced risk for cardiovascular and thromboembolic events in certain settings. In Europe and the United States, Phase 3 clinical trials are currently underway in order to check on cardiovascular challenges. For patients with von Hippel-Landau disease who require specific cancer therapy, the first HIF-2-alpha antagonist just received FDA approval in August 2021. We look forward to seeing what other therapeutic opportunities will arise from this exciting discovery. If you are interested in getting more insights, follow the conversation between Professor Sir Peter Ratcliffe and Professor Kai Uwe Eckhardt at the LIFE 2021 Nephrology Congress.